Here we see the reaction of ammonium dichromate that is formed into chromium 3 oxide once again. A very important type of calculation in chemistry is to determine the amount of product that I can form given a certain amount of starting material. For instance, what if I have 15 grams of the reactant, this very beautifully looking orange powder? How many grams of chromium-3 oxide can I form? Can I perform this calculation? The answer is yes. These type of calculations are called stoichiometric calculations. Stoichiometry means measurements with quantities of elements. And we'll use the information in the chemical equation to arrive at the desired results. Now, in these calculations, several conversions will be very important. The following conversion is very important. The conversion from grams to moles. The number of moles is defined as the total mass of a compound divided by its molar mass. Another important conversion is the reverse conversion from moles to grams. The total amount of grams of a compound is the molar mass times the number of moles. A third conversion is the conversion of the number of moles of one compound into the number of moles of another compound. For instance, the number of moles of compound 2 equals the number of moles of compound 1 times the mole ratio, where the number of moles of compound 2 appears on top and the number of moles of compound 1 appears at the bottom. This ensures that the unit of moles of compound 1 will strike out. Let's look at an example. Here is the same chemical equation once again. Let's try to determine how many grams of products we form given 15 grams of the reactant. The first step we have to take is to make sure this uh, reaction, this equation, is balanced. Now, fortunately, we already did that in a previous segment. So we can move on. The second step I'm going to take is to convert the amount in grams of the reactant into the number of moles of the reactant. I can do that by taking 15 grams of the reactant and divide that by the molar mass of the reactant. If I perform this step, I find 0.0595 moles of the reactant. The third step that we want to take is to determine the mole ratios between the reactant and the products. For each one mole, I find looking at the chemical equation, one mole of nitrogen molecules. I find four moles of water molecules. That's the four in the chemical equation. I also find one mole of chromium-3 oxide. From these numbers, I can determine the mole ratios. And using these mole ratios, I will try to determine the number of moles of the products. I will convert the number of moles of the reactant into the number of moles of the product. I can take 0.0595 moles of the reactant and convert that into moles of nitrogen molecules by multiplying it with the mole ratio, where the number of moles of nitrogen appears on top and the number of moles of reactant appears at the bottom. I find 0.0595 moles of nitrogen molecules. I've effectively converted the number of moles of reactant into number of moles of nitrogen molecules. And I can perform the same trick to find the number of water molecules. Number of moles of reactant times the ratio of the number of moles of water over the number of moles of reactant, which is 4 to 1, and I find 0.238 moles of water molecules. I perform the same step to find the number of chromium-3 oxide molecules. Number of moles of reactant times the mole ratio of chromium-3 oxide on top and number of moles of reactant at the bottom tells me 0.0595 moles of chromium-3 oxide. Now I know the number of moles of each of the products, but I have to determine the number of grams of each of the products. That means I have to convert moles to grams. I can do that by taking the number of moles that I just found, for instance, for nitrogen, 0.0. 595 moles of nitrogen molecules times the molar mass of nitrogen molecules. And I find 1.67 grams of nitrogen molecules. Note that the units correctly strike out. The same step I can perform for water. 0.238 moles of water times the molar mass of water 
gives me 4.29 grams of water. And then finally, 0.0595 moles of chromium-3 oxide times the molar mass of chromium-3 oxide, 152 grams per mole, equals 9.04 grams of chromium-3 oxide. The steps we've taken here are the following. First, we made sure that the reaction is balanced. Only then we can continue. Second, we converted the number of grams of the reactant into number of moles of the reactant. Next, we determine the mole ratios between the reactant and the products. And using these mole ratios, we converted the number of moles of the reactant into number of moles of the products. From the number of moles of the products, we converted this into grams of the products. This completes our calculation.